Hi, I'm talking with Kelly here. Uh, Kelly's been homeless uh, on and off two years. Uh, actually, we're filming this uh, in his park. There's a park right off to my right. And uh, this is kind of where she stays at night. She sleeps on the, on the floor, the cement floor here. Um, there's also, um, it's like a little kind of a shelter area. She stays out of the rain. There's no anything really to keep her warm. Thank God it's the summertime now. And I'm just kind of panning around just to show you where she's sleeping. Um, and Kelly's been having some problems over for the last several years. Um, she's been sick. She's got a problem with her knee. Um, last night, uh, you slept under this, right? Under this? Yes. Well, kind of a little gazebo. And... Um, She's uh, finding it hard to get around because of her leg and her weight. Um, and she's been, uh, she's been doing pretty well on her own. She occasionally stays with her mother. And, uh, but her mother has had heart problems and has uh, kind of thrown her out. Uh, they don't get along. Uh, she has a daughter that's 19 years old that's doing real well, that stays with the grandmother. But let, me, let me ask Kelly a couple of questions here. Get you know, get you to know her a little better. Kelly, um, how old are you? Forty-three. Have you had any drug or alcohol problems? No. Okay. Is there uh, any real major problems with your body that you know of? Any sicknesses or major diseases? Just um, bronchial asthma and um, torn meniscus in my right knee. You tore, you tore what? Torn meniscus in my right knee. In your right knee, and. Um, what do you do for food and how do you get along? How many days you go without food sometimes? Sometimes it can be for a couple of weeks. I, I do get food stamps, but I try to help my daughter out as much as I can. So a good majority of my stamps go toward my daughter and helping her out. And because you know, leave me with very minimal, you know, for a whole month to... Right. Now you've been in and out of shelters before, am I right? Yes. Uh, what's the longest have you stayed in a shelter? Longest, maybe three months, maybe the longest. <clears throat> and what was that? Where was that located? Well, longer than three months. It was uh, the Luth it was not considered a shelter, but it was on um, the Luther Mission Society it had a program for women and children, women who were pregnant, ready to have children. I was in there for maybe about eight months, maybe I, or I would guess. Not eight months, but I know between like six to eight months. Well, that was, gee, that was almost 20 years ago. Yeah, 20 That's when years you had ago. your daughter. Yeah. Right. I knew Kelly, by the way, uh, almost 20, if not more than 20 years. Yeah. I met her when she was carrying the baby uh, at, the, at that particular shelter down in Annapolis. And she's been struggling with life for so long. And she knows, and I have told her before, I could help her out, I could help her, I could get her off the street. And she was always hesitant. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, now she's determined. It took her almost 20 years to get determined to get her life turned around. So that's where we are at this point. I picked her up this morning. I took her to, to counsel with her uh, at a meeting this morning with me. Uh, and I'm trying to get her off the street uh, permanently. Uh, she did stay with a lady, a good friend of mine, uh, at least one or two days, uh, about, maybe about a year ago, uh, maybe six months ago, and was trying to help her out. But again, this is where she's staying. And I want to kind of get you a look at the situation that she's in. Uh, yeah, no cushions. <laughs> there's no, there's no bed padding. Uh, there's no bed at all here. It's just a regular cement floor. Uh, and one of the problems is that she, you know, she finds it hard to get around because of her, her leg. And it's getting up and down with the bad knee right. sleeping here on this concrete. <laughs> right. And. Uh, and I can't leave anything behind here because they'll get taken and thrown away. So it's like stuff, any little stuff I have, I gotta take with me. You know. So. Carry what you write. Carry what you. And you just take it uh, in a bag. I know we got some of the stuff in the car. Yeah. But we've been working on different places to find shelter for her. Uh, it's just so hard to find shelters that are available for women. Men, they're much easier to find. Uh, and, and with uh, me, with not having the drug or alcohol problem, it's hard, a little bit harder to find a place than it would be if I had a problem with alcohol or drugs to where I right. would get in a lot easier, right. you right. know, which I don't. So that's what's making it so hard into getting into a shelter somewhere. I had a, a place in Baltimore I used to take these guys to. 
I still do occasionally. Uh, and one guy didn't have any problems with drugs or alcohol. And the lady that I was talking to at the time, she said, get him a pint of liquor and have him drink and then have him come in here. He said, we'll take him in then. But they wouldn't take him in because he didn't have a drug or alcohol problem. Yeah. And that's very true, what you just said. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I can see someone saying, yeah, go get her a, a bottle of this and just let him come in with the smell of alcohol and let them, but, you know, I don't want to lie to just to get into a place for, what, three months and then be right back out to where I'm at again, right. you know. Because some of those programs, you know, don't, are only for a few months, not for right. like a year or two. Right. When it's starting to get to come about and, you know, being out in the cold is not where I want to be right now. Right. Now, you've never been arrested for anything. No. Just going to get a couple of good other shots here. Um, and, again, you don't have no drug or alcohol problem. No. <laughs> okay. And it's just amazing that you people just find places anywhere to bed down for the night. Uh, and this is one place that she's, she stays in. And... Uh, is there anything you wanna you wanna add to this little interview that we're doing? I don't know what else to add. <laughs> okay. Um, what are your plans for today? Just hanging out wherever I can, you know, till time being, until it's time to come back here or finding somewhere else to sleep besides here. Right. Well, we're gonna try to work on a couple of things to get you off the street. Uh, like I said, it's been almost 20 years that I know her. And she's been on and off, on and off. She's still with her mother. Her mother, right now, they, she doesn't stay there anymore because of the mother's problems. Uh, and so we're going to kind of help her out as much as we can to get her off the street and get her a permanent place to stay. Uh, so I just want to end here. Uh, this is Reverend Tony Tona, uh, ministering to Kelly for many, many years. And she finally came to the light. She knows now she really has to get off the street. And I want to thank you, Kelly, for this interview. God bless you, and I hope things work out for you.